We've already um, covered sub-organelles and their function. We learned a bunch of them. Those are the kind of things that will make up a large chunk of your quiz. To help us reinforce what we learned last week about cell organelles, let's compare them to parts of an imaginary city. It's kind of a weird city, I guess, if we're set up like this. But we could still use this analogy to help us sort of understand some of the cell parts and what they do. So I'm going to ask you for a lot of these. Number one, so this is this kind of protective fence surrounding this city. What part would be most like that in terms of what it does? Wyatt? Cell wall. Yeah, that would be the cell wall. Wait, but is this a plant wall? So this, yeah, this sum is going to be describing a, um, a plant cell. But yeah, cell wall would be accurate there because it's a protective layer around the outside. Well then, how about this gatehouse, this guard house? Emma? That would be like the cell membrane, correct. Because the cell membrane is sort of what determines which things can enter and leave the cell. The cell membrane regulates that. And so that would be like this guard house. Now, number three, what is a cell made out of? So this, number three, a construction site. You're building the actual buildings of the city. So what's that going to be like? Danielle? No, not quite. Sophia? No. Okay. Ribosomes. A cell itself is made, I mean, of lots of things, but much of it is, what do ribosomes make? Protein. protein. And that's what most of this cell is, or much of the cell is protein. So that's actually making the parts of the cell itself. How about the transport company? Now, notice the roads are only going within this city, because that may change what you think of this one. Maya? No. Not the nucleus. Devin? The ER? Yeah, the ER. Because the ER is a series of membranes, transports things within the cell. Now, what if this road were only leading out of the city? Then we would have to change this analogy. What would it be in that case? That's what I'm asking you. No. The Golgi body. Yes, the Golgi body sends things out of the cell, packages up things that are going to be leaving the cell. Or how about this power plant? This is a more accurate, I know we say, well, I'm going to stop talking for a second. Uh, Jake, what is this? Mitochondria. Mitochondria. Now, I like power plant is a better analogy. I don't know why we say powerhouse, because I don't really know exactly what a powerhouse is. But a power plant takes energy in one form. Maybe it's solar energy. Maybe it's nuclear energy. Maybe it's hydropower. Maybe it's coal. And transforms that energy into a form we can use in our houses. That's what the mitochondria does. It takes in one form of energy, transforms it, into a type of energy the cell can actually use. What about this greenhouse? It's growing the food for this city. Caitlin? Is it the, um, is it the chloroplast? It is the chloroplast because they make the food for the plant cell. Chloroplast, that's its purpose, that's its function. How about this waste disposal plant? Getting rid of garbage, things that are no longer useful in the city. Why? Close, and it looks very similar, but actually they get rid of it. Sophia? The cytoplasm? No. Maddie? Lysosome. That is a, it has digestive 
enzymes in it that can break down things within the cell. Get rid of like organelles that are no longer useful. Helps it, yes, destroy pathogens. What about eight, the government building? Olivia. The nucleus? That would be like the nucleus. And how about these food and water storage tanks? What would they be an analogy for? Max? Vacuole? Yeah, vacuoles. Good. All right. So I'm going to skip ahead. So there's just more analogies, but I think we've done enough that you can understand. Oh, Mr. Carey. Um, it's up for your own interpretation. So, let's get to a question William was kind of talking about earlier. Are cells alive? Are cells made of cells? Or, so, let's think about how living organisms are kind of organized. What are the simplest living things that we know of? Well, but we could say, like, we, I am an organism, so is a tree outside, so is a mushroom. So, like, organism, the word itself just means a living thing. One single living thing is an organism. So, no. I mean, the smallest one thinks they are organisms, that's by definition, but, like, what are they? Yes, single-celled organisms, specifically bacteria, are really, really tiny. They're very simple cells, but they're a single cell, but they are still alive. They carry out all the life functions. They're made of cells. So that is the very simplest level of organization. The very simplest living things are just single cells. We know cells are the basic unit of life. So in some cases, a cell is a living thing itself on its own. But, for example, in our bodies, we also have cells and they're alive, but one of our cells is not an organism. Right? It's part of us. Our whole collection of cells is the organism. So, in our body, for example, we have individual muscle cells. They don't look like the cells we learned about. They look different. Their structure is different but they still are individual cells. In more complex organisms, individual cells kind of work together to do one specific job. And when we have a group of muscle cells that are working together to contract and relax, we call that muscle tissue. A tissue is a group of cells kind of all working together, all doing the same thing, accomplishing some goal. So a group of cells working together form tissue. For example, we have cardiac muscle tissue is a type of muscle tissue in our heart. It's made of muscle cells. Could bacteria have tissues? No, because they're just one cell. So they, they don't have tissues, they don't have organs or organ systems or any of these other things. Okay, well, in our body, must cardiac muscle tissue works with nervous tissue and blood okay, to accomplish a job of pumping blood through our body. What do we call that? What, what am I talking about? Yeah. Well, no, not a, I don't want a system yet. But to pump blood is? What, what organ? That's, no? What organ? Yeah, the heart is an organ. It's in our body. It's a bunch of different types of tissues working together to do a job. And its job, pump blood. Yeah, it is. So some things don't, so these are the four levels. 
Some things only have cells. Other things have tissues, but no organs. Other organisms have organs, but no organ systems. And then... They are a cell, a single cell. We call them a single cell or a unicellular organ. So, a bunch of organs like our heart, arteries, veins, capillaries, working together to move blood all throughout our body. What do we? What does that form? The circulatory system. A system is a bunch of organs working together to do a certain job. In this case, distribute blood throughout the body. So you're seeing this pattern. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, uh, it's yes. the work Cells work together, form tissues. Tissues work together, form organs. Organs work together, form organ systems. So the simplest living things are only cells. The most complex have all of these parts. And then if we have an organism, in some cases, it's several organ systems working together. In other cases, just a cell. But an organism is a living thing. One entire living thing. Wait, what was that example for that one? Cardi Cardiovascular system or circulatory system. They're both words kind of mean the same thing. Are organisms, why are organisms organs? What's the together? So in complex animals, with several organ systems working together form an organism. It is, I don't know, I'm not a super Harry Potter fan, but it is an is a wizard a human? Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Is Luke Skywalker a human? Yes. No. No. He's, he's not, not in Earth. Earth. He's not in Earth. Okay, but that doesn't mean he's not human. It's a long time ago. He's too far away. Humans haven't evolved yet. That is a long time ago and he got too far away. What is he? Well, aren't we all ladies? All right. So anyway. He's a mammal. Sorry, I didn't need to uh, sidetrack us. But. I'm, not, I'm gonna sort of skip, you have these in your notes, I think, right? Yeah. I'm not gonna, you don't have to write all the details down, it just sort of reviews, but what I wanna show you is just what do these organelles actually look like in a transmission electron microscope? This is a mitochondria. It's shaped like a bean, it has those folds inside. This is, these are individual, don't worry about writing it down. These are chromosomes. Okay. This whole thing is the nucleus, the outer layer, the nuclear membrane, the inside, the nucleolus. This is a plant cell. You can see it has this sort of thick outer layer. That's the cell wall. It looks like a pole. Yeah. Um, this stuff, this is the ER, these series of membranes throughout the cell. Look at these delicious pancakes. Look at these drops of delicious golden Vermont grade A amber 100% pure maple. Last time you said it was New York. Maybe this time is not. No, you're not writing any of it. All right. So, yes, let me explain your lab. That's all we have for our notes. Yay. I will explain all, don't worry.